Thank you for your overwhelming support. I am humbled and grateful for your trust. I will do everything to deserve your trust and uh, I will do everything in my power to fight for our shared cause. Cari amici, siamo uniti a Roma oggi dove i nostri amici italiani che la stanno mettendo tutta per rendere l'Italia un paese più forte, più giusto, un paese, un paese dove Matteo Renzi ha definito un piano di riforme coraggioso per ridare speranza e futuro all'Italia. Siamo riuniti a Roma, dove 60 anni fa gli europei hanno posto le fondamenta per un'incredibile storia di successo. Siamo riuniti a Roma come una grande forza politica, con migliaia di volontari e simpatizzanti venuti da tutta l'Italia e da tutta l'Europa, con leader politici forti, come andiamo oggi in 19 paesi europei. Stiamo tornando a vincere in Europa e vinceremo le prossime elezioni europee. Friends, we have come together here in Rome because we know the next European election are not just an election. For the first time, the people will decide what kind of Europe they want. For the first time, the people will decide who will be the next Commission President. On your behalf, I want to become the President of the Commission the first Commission President the first Commission President who is not the result of a backroom deal. The first Commission President who is the result of a democratic vote of citizens and voters in Europe. I am a German, born in 1955 into a modest family as the youngest of five children. I grew up after the war in the border region of Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands, where Franz Timmermans and I are living today around four and a half kilometers as neighbors. And dear friends, the generation of my parents were asked to make painful sacrifices, longer work hours, higher taxes, lower salaries, and no holidays. And our parents made these sacrifices without complaining for their children. They wanted their children to have a better future. And we did. We had a life they could not have dared to dream about. Born into peace and raised into prosperity. Over the last five years, politicians of my generation have demanded similar sacrifices from people. Lower salaries, lower pensions, fewer rights of workers, and fewer public services, but higher taxes. And for what? Not for the common good, not for the future, but to save banks. And our children are unemployed.
Governments all over Europe answered to the crisis with pain for people, billions for banks. As the result of wrong policy, people are suffering. Homes have been lost, jobs destroyed, businesses crushed, schools closed, and healthcare cut. Comrades, this medicine did not make us better, it made us sicker. It has weakened our economy, and as the result of wrong policies, divisions are widening. Divisions within European countries and divisions between European countries. Sadly, the crisis has not bound us closer together, but driven us apart. Even in this room, we have people with different views and opinions. I hear different opinions from delegates from different countries on what most urgently needs to be done. Populists are driving, as Sigmar Gabriel just said, they are driving this division. They blame other citizens for the crisis. They feed nationalism. They inflame old and new hatred. They call to close borders and to kick out foreigners, seeking to turn nation against nation, European against European. It worries me deeply to see again the old demons, racism, anti-Semitism, xenophobia, demons we have held in check for so long, demons that have only ever brought disaster upon the peoples of Europe. And yes, divisions within our countries are growing. The rich are getting richer every day, and the poor are getting poorer. Today, 120 million Europeans live in poverty or under its threat. That is shameful. 27 million Europeans who want to work cannot find a job. In some countries, more than every second young man and women is unemployed. The young generation are paying with their life chances for a crisis they have not caused. And women, women are hit hardest by the crisis. That is a scandal in Europe today. And we must make an end to this scandal. We, the European Socialists. And I ask you, all of you in this room, Today, the following question. It is a question to us, social democrats and socialists. Are we still able to feel the pain? Do we feel the pain of a young man or a young woman who sends off 300 job applications and gets 300 no's? Do we feel the pain of a couple in their 50s who lose their job and lose their home because they can no longer pay the mortgages and they are told that they are too old to find a new job? Do we feel the pain of parents who don't know where the next warm meal for the children will come from? I think only if we are able to share this pain, we are able to regain trust of people. Only if we are able to share this pain, we deserve to win the elections. Chers camarades, à ceux qui sont déçus par l'Europe, je veux dire ceci. Je partage votre déception. Je comprends votre colère. Mais votre colère doit être dirigée vers ceux qui nous ont entraînés dans la crise et non pas contre les autres peuples ou les autres pays. La réponse n'est pas...
La réponse n'est pas non à l'Europe. La seule réponse est de se battre pour une meilleure Europe. Je veux une Europe basée sur la confiance mutuelle et le respect. Une Europe où les pays travaillent ensemble sur un pied d'égalité. Une Europe où un pays, et je répète ça soigneusement, parce que je l'ai dit déjà souvent, une Europe où un pays ne peut pas s'imposer aux autres du fait de sa puissance économique. Comme président de la Commission, je veux réduire les fossés entre riches et pauvres, entre les grands et les petits, entre les pays et à l'intérieur même de ces pays. Je veux que nous soyons de nouveau des partenaires et des amis. Je veux rapprocher les gens. Je veux reconstruire la confiance. Je veux des communautés basées sur l'équité. Commençons aujourd'hui dans cette salle, à dépasser ces divisions. Si nous nous mettons d'accord sur cela, nous aurons déjà fait un grand pas en avant aujourd'hui à Rome. Having a job is about more than a pay packet. It is also about dignity. Stefan spoke about that. It is about dignity. I will remember the first day of my traineeship back in 1975, on the 1st of February. I will never forget. I was so proud to be able to say that I was a trainee, that I would someday become a qualified bookseller. Don't know if what became true, but... And a few years later, I opened my own bookstore. Never again, I... Never again. I had the same feeling of achievement and purpose and uh, never again I felt so happy as I did at that day. This is why, as Commission President, my first priority will be jobs, good jobs. During the next five years, for every action we take in the European Union, we must be able to answer simply a question. How will this help to create jobs? What more can we do to give a real chance to our children? In five years, I want to be able to say to young unemployed, I have met, yes, we succeeded. We have sharply reduced youth unemployment, yes. We have made traineeships a priority, yes. We have found increased funding for the youth guarantee. And I want to hear from them, yes, we did find a job. This is what we have to do in the next five years. In five years, I want to say that we are closing the gender pay gap and more women are holding top jobs because I want my daughter to have the same opportunities my son has. Dear comrades, this is my profound conviction. Inequality between men and women is a scandal in Europe in the 21st century. In, in five years, I want to say to all those who are toiling away for slave wages, we have ensured fair pay for everyone because we fought social dumping and introduced the European si system of minimum wages tailored to each individual country, enabling people throughout Europe to live in dignity. Friends, to create jobs, we must get European economy back on track. That will not be easy. What has been lost during the crisis is not just a matter of GDP or production quotas. 
We have also lost our optimism about our future, the sense that our economy is built on fairness and hard work is rewarded. As Commission President, I want to focus on boosting small and medium-sized businesses, overcoming especially the credit crunch, promoting the smart re-industrialization of Europe and investing in the ecological and digi digital economy. Small and medium-sized enterprises are the backbone of our economy. They have the potential to create millions of jobs if we help them. And I want to help them. I was myself, I was myself, Sigmar Gabriel spoke about that. I was myself a small business owner with my bookshop in my hometown, Würselen. I told you my proudest day was the first day when I turned the key of the front door to open that business. Twelve years later, I passed off this bookshop to one of my employees. That, I gave, that gave me pride in the business we had built and the business that would go on. This bookshop is still existing and continues to give people a job. It is a small example of how that backbone of our economy is based on trust, shared interests and strong communities. And I will show that trust in all countries of the European <laughs> Union to all owners of small and middle enterprises. And, dear friends, the crisis has driven home this lesson. Industry is the cornerstone of our economy, of our economic su success and our prosperity. And we risk falling behind if we don't act boldly. There is work to be done to lay the foundation for new growth, for new prosperity, new quality jobs, and huge savings. As Commission President, I will renew our commitment to research and innovation. I will redirect EU funds to science and training. Matteo Renzi spoke about that. Why? Because the future of our continent depends on a smart and sustainable reindustrialization, on using the sun and the wind to fuel. to use sun and wind to fuel the energy needs of our homes and factories, on fuel-efficient cars and cheap solar cells built here in Europe, robotics and fiber optics to make us competitive on electric grids and infrastructure on and offline to connect us. We must support our industry within the European Union and we must defend our industry with the help of the European Union against international competition. We cannot allow our countries to be played off one against the other. As Commission President, I will protect our social and in environmental standards and our interest in trade agreements. In five years, I want to be able to say we have made Europe once more the prime location for business and industry with smart new products developed in European labs, manufactured in European factories by European workers and shipped from European ports to the rest of the world. As Commission President, I want to put fairness back at the heart of our policies. Liebe Genossinnen und Genossen, zu lange wurde Gier belohnt. Zu lange waren die Anständigen die Dummen. Durch Steuerbetrug 
und Steuervermeidung wird die Allgemeinheit in jedem Jahr um drei Billionen Euro betrogen. Geld, das wir dringend brauchen für unsere Kinder, für ältere Menschen. Geld, das fehlt für unsere Schulen und unsere Krankenhäuser, unsere Universitäten und unsere Straßen- und Eisenbahnnetze. Liebe Genossinnen und Genossen, Steuerbetrug ist eine Straftat. Steuerbetrug untergräbt die Solidarität zwischen Staaten und Menschen. Dass große Multis Milliardengewinne einfahren, aber keine Steuern zahlen, das geht gar nicht. Das ist ein Skandal in fünf Jahren. In fünf Jahren will ich zu jedem Bürger, der ehrlich seine Steuern zahlt, sagen, wir haben hart gegen Steueroasen in Europa und in der ganzen Welt durchgegriffen. Und die Finanztransaktionssteuer ist endlich eine Realität. Und liebe Genossinnen und Genossen, und auch liebe Premierministerinnen und Premierminister und Staatspräsidentinnen und Staatspräsidenten und liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen des Europaparlaments und aller nationalen Parlamente zusammen, wir brauchen kein europäisches Finanzministerium, um den einfachen Grundsatz durchzusetzen. Das Land des Gewinns ist das Land der Steuer. Les bénéfices doivent être imposés là où ils sont faits. The country of the profit must be the country of taxation. This is the rule we have to introduce in Europe. For too long, we have been told that the invisible hand regulates markets that we cannot tame financial markets. <laughs> we can and we must. We can regulate and supervise banks. <laughs> we can separate retail banking from speculation. We can break the toxic link between bank debt and state debt. We can stop dangerous speculation that is putting our economy at risk. In five years, I want to be able to say to citizens who had to bail out banks, it will never happen again. We have made banks safe. My Europe is a Europe that puts citizens first. Our Europe is a Europe that puts citizens first. People have the right to expect that their food, their clothes, their toys are of high quality. As Commission President, I want to safeguard our high consumer protection, our social and environmental standards, so that our sh children are safe. People rightly want the EU to help ensure that their data is properly protected we do not want to live in the knowledge that our most private thoughts are spied upon by secret services beyond any control or by businesses set on making money with our data. Dear friends, I am convinced that it is up to us, the socialists and social democrats, to protect the people. We have always fought for the dignity of human beings. We have humanized the emerging industrialized society. We are called upon to civilize this technological revolution too, so that many and not the few benefit, so that our data is protected. The protection of personal data is a cornerstone of our very identity, identity as free individuals. This is why, as Commission President, I will make a bill of digital rights 
to my priority. My Europe is a Europe that protects the rights of its citizens. Our Europe is a Europe that protects the rights of its citizens. Recently, free movement has come under attack. Populists are merchants of fear and hate. They have painted the picture of a massive influx from one part of Europe to another part of Europe, taking away jobs, living off social security, and lowering wages. As Commission President, I will never accept that we have first and second class European citizens. I will never accept that we close borders again. But I don't say that we do not have problems we must deal with. But people wanting to work are not the problem. The problems are rules that allow people to be criminally exploited, rules that allow people to slave away at famine wages, thereby undermining our workers' rights and social standards. We have to change the rules not to take away people's rights. We have to take other measures. We have to change the rules and not to close the borders. In five years, I want to say to the worker who fears for her job because of cheap labor and to everyone who is exploited, we have fought wage dumping. We have achieved equal pay for equal work at the same workplace in Europe, for men and women equal. And Bernadette, to the thousands and thousands of trade union organizers in the workplace, I say I understand how hard your job has become. And I understand that you are as passionate as I am about equality. I say to you that in my commission, social policy will be restored so that workers and employers can start a real conversation in Europe. Some of you know that I was for many years, like Matteo Renzi, a mayor of a town not as nice as Firenze in the border region between, I said it, Germany, Belgium and the Netherlands. This is where I come from. This is where I have my roots. This is where I still live with my family. During these years as a mayor, I learned one important lesson. Being a mayor is not about big ideological discussions. It's about finding practical, pragmatic solutions for the everyday problems of people sitting down with the work council and the entrepreneurs, with the clergyman and the teacher to find solutions for the needs of the people. As a mayor, I had to make sure that someone collects the rubbish, repairs the traffic lights and drives the school bus. And the mayor will do a better job if he or she listens closely to the people, learns what their everyday worries and big concerns are. So I learned that decisions are better, more transparent, and more democratic the closer they are taken to the people. This is why, as Commission President, I will change the way the Commission works, what it does, and how it responds to political priorities of people. For many, in, many people, the EU has become a synonym for the actions of the Troika and for austerity. I want to change this. Europe is more than the sum 
of its Brussels-based institutions. <laughs> Europe Europe is the sum of its nations, of its hundreds of thousands of municipalities, of its regions, of its 28 member states, and of course, and above all, Europe is the 507 million fellow European citizens. My Europe is built from the bottom up. I strongly believe, I strongly believe that everything that can be better done on a local, on a regional or a national level should be done on a local, on a regional or on a national level. I don't want the EU to do everything. I want the EU to act where it brings values, added values, to its citizens. Yes, because we are stronger together, but not everything can be solved in Brussels. There is a lot of things to do on the regional, local, and on the national level. And then we get the necessary march of maneuver free in Brussels to focus on the important worldwide challenges for the European Union. That's my union I want to build. And we who often criticize the EU, we are just in these hours dramatically reminded by our neighbors that Europe remains to be the promise for a bright future. The Ukrainians on, on Maidan Square who stood up for democracy and freedom were waving the European flag. Yes, the people on Maidan Square were waving the flag of our European community of peace. Our European Union, where enemies became friends, where borders were opened and walls torn down, and nations shook off the oppression of dictatorship and became democracies. The people on Maidan Square were waving the flag of our European community of values, built on democracy, human rights, the rule of law, the freedom of speech, and the freedom of press, a society where child labor and the death penalty have no place, a society which puts people at its heart. I want my children and my children's children to live in this kind of society. And I want Europe to remain a shining light of hope for all those struggling for freedom and democracy. <laughs> the people have won, dear friends, their right to choose the next commission president. The people have won the right to vote for their kind of Europe they want. And we must protect their right to choose. Because we must protect it because there are those cynically saying, no, it is not really important. It, it does not really matter what the people vote for. It does not matter who wins the majority in the European Parliament. The president will be selected behind closed doors in a deal just the way it has always been. This is wrong. This is cynical. For sure, dear friends, for sure I am not the most likely candidate for a backroom deal. Yes, I know, I'm a bookseller, a small town mayor who comes from a modest family. I'm not a former head of government. 
but I am a representative of the people who wears his heart on his sleeve. But many people still don't seem to understand. The rules are changed forever. The next Commission President will be elected, not appointed behind closed doors. We, we socialists and social democrats stand up for democracy in Europe. And I want to become the Commission President by winning the trust of European voters. I want to convince people of my, of our just unanimously adopted program. I want to convince citizens of my ideas and I will travel to the towns and villages all over Europe, knock on the doors and talk to people about my ideas. Because, because there is only one deal I want, only one deal I want, and that is a deal with European voters. Friends, we have come together here in Rome because we want a better Europe, a Europe that makes the lives of people better. A Europe that holds the promise for a bright future. I have the heart and the resolve to fight this fight, but I can't do it alone. I say to you, to each and every one of you, if it's the first time you vote, or if you have wavered feeling the left has lost its way over the last years. Comrades and friends, it's time to come home. If only some of those who did not vote last time vote for us, this time we will win the European election. <laughs> Dear friends, It is time to join. It is time to organize, to act, to get out and knock the vote. We have come together here in Rome to carry our passion for Europe, a Europe that is fair, a Europe that is social and strong. Out onto the streets of every city and into the homes and the hearts of the people. Our movement is the heart of thousands of communities across Europe. We know people's daily challenges because we face them side by side. And this connection, this grounding in everyday life will lead to a massive mobilization at the end of May. It's now for us to fight for Europe, a human Europe, a Europe that is social and democratic. It is time to join, to act, to fight for a social democratic Europe. <laughs>